Welcome back to Do It Myself Garage. I'm going to try to film myself doing it this time. This is a pretty easy one. This is the rear brakes on a 2014 Buick Enclave. And one of these is the right size. There we go. Break them loose before you jack it up. I've got a, a board under the front tire so she doesn't roll. Um, you could set the parking brake, but that would only stop the rear wheel. And then actually can become problematic because you might need the wheel to spin. If you ever do your own and they're aluminum rims, after you've tightened them, after 50 to 100 miles, you're going to want to retort these because aluminum has a tendency to, to uh, loosen up after they've been torqued. Steel, not so much. Never had a problem with that. But aluminum, yep. So I've never personally done the brakes on the Enclave. The front ones I ended up having done for me because it was a last minute thing right before a trip. Yeah, that cost a couple bucks. Ugh. But I had them do the brakes and the rotors. We were having some wobble up front. This thing has about 160,000 on it. I've owned it since it had, ooh, I can't remember. The buy with 90 on it, I think, something like that. I've never done the rear brakes. Alright, let's get her jacked up now. Make sure you find a good spot underneath the jack on. Do not jack on something you should not. And There's a jack point right over here, but it's a little small for my jack. I really don't trust it, so I'm going to jack on the part of the suspension back here. Only need it high enough to get the tire off. There we go, perfect. Let me go grab a jack stand real quick. I'll use that jack point as my safety spot. And right there, gotta go just a titch more and I can slide it under there. There we go. And I'm just going to leave it just like that. That is actually kind of actually stuck on there a little bit. So here we go. Just have to take two bolts loose on here according to what they said. And that should come right off of there. Some calipers. Let me bring you in here. Make sure. And yeah, you can see that. Um, some of them have the way they bolt on. You can just tip it out, put the pads in, and tip it back up. Uh, this is not like that, but I do have a bolt here and a bolt here. And uh, with any luck, I can break those loose and get these out of there. No, those aren't the two. They're going to be these other two. These are the slide pins for the caliper. And actually, yeah, I'm down to absolutely no, uh, no wear left at all. I'm down to almost the metal. It's just started scraping. All right, battery went dead. I finally found a socket. I'm using a 7A, so I don't think it's the right size, but it fit. 
able to put it on the breaker bar. And now she's loose and I can get it out of here with the ratchet. Went and got my impact wrench, but there's no room in there for it. Guess I didn't have as loose as I thought I did. <laughs> wow. Okay. I have an extension over here. Maybe this will work better. I'm fighting it. Or not. No, no, I'm on the spring. No happy medium there. There's a bolt back here holding the brake line on and when I keep that's what I keep bumping on and losing my grip. Alright, I'll be back. You don't need to watch me struggle with this. Alright, finally got that other bolt out of there. I don't know what that problem what its problem was. And don't hang it by your Don't hang it by your, your uh, brake line. So don't put any pressure on that or you'll be replacing that too. All right, see how bad these are. All right, we'll try the screwdriver first. Let's see if we can get this out of here. I'm not even sure you can see what I'm doing. No, can't see anything that I'm doing. Sorry about that. Normally, normally these just fall out of here. You know, not fall, fall, but I mean, pretty close to it. Uh, they're normally not wedged in there like that, that's for sure. that rusts it off is actually the uh, anti-vibration shim, I believe. So that's a goner. All right, now let's see if we can get this dang thing out of here. I think I got her. Can't started coming out one side, but not the other. I think is my problem here. Let me hit this a little bit. There we go. Yeah, they definitely seen their better days. That one had a little bit left in it, but she was almost down to the to the wire where it starts chattering. It hits this wire. That's what that's for. So definitely time to replace them. All right. So now, really, all you need, I got to go take the cap off the brake. Booster up of the brake cylinder up front, the brake cylinder, the brake reservoir, and then we just got to compress this down with a uh, uh, C clamp will work just fine. And the reason you got to do that is they're adjusted right now to how thin the pads were, and obviously the pads are th gonna, the new ones going to be thicker. So let's go up front. And yes, I have family members that don't know what stuff is, so I label everything. I mean, because it really, what does it say there? It doesn't say anything. Dot three, what does that mean to an amateur? So just open that up so it has, has a place for the fluid to go. And before someone comments, dot three, yes, Department of Transportation, that's a standard. Um, oh, just barely big enough to pull on that. Now, some cars, these actually spin in. So look up your vehicle. I looked mine up just to make sure. This one just compresses. And if you're having problems, you might have to put like a board or something across. But mine is compressing very easily because they were in good working shape. And I don't know if you can see that, but it's in way further than it was before. I'm going to keep going. As long as I'm not pressing on the rubber part, I know I'm not going to damage anything. I want to press that in as far as I can, otherwise I, I might have some problems getting those pads on there. And that's as far as I go. That's flush with the, with the, with the 
piece there. So that's about the best you could hope for. I got that. Got that cylinder right there. Got that in flush. So now I should be good to put the uh, put the new pads on. Let me grab them out of the box. I went to Auto Value. I actually won a uh, um, gift card from them yesterday. I was over at the Moose Lodge uh, car show yesterday. I had just gotten the exhaust put on the GTO. Went over there and they had a bunch of sponsors. So uh, Moose Lodge, thank you for having the car show. And I ended up winning a, a gift certificate. So that went, uh, that definitely went towards these. Um, these will have, let's take a look, see here if they have a front and back mark. I don't think they have anything marked on these. Some cars are different. Some are front and back, left and right. These appear, these appear to be symmetrical. Um, so you can't hardly mess these up. Some vehicles are not, so pay attention when you're taking them apart, okay? All right, so then, instead of the vibration pads, they have these clips on these. And there's a little instructions in here. Caliper system one. Shows these go on the ends. And then caliper system two. And which is not the clips that they're showing me. Well, either way, it, they, they're supposed to go on the end. Let's see if we can figure that part out. Oh, there's already some in here. I gotta take them out. Okay, so these do not have the ones on the back side, but they do have do have these. I'll show you. So it's got these right down in here. Some of the cheap brake pads I bought in the past did not come with these. So, anti-vibration -vib piece there. And just pops in there. Like so. Just pay attention to the one you already have in there. It's pretty, pretty straightforward. And... Just a little piece of tin is all it is. I think it's tin, spring steel, something. Not a big deal. And then when you put the pad in there, it'll hold it in place. Okay, same thing with the other one. Get that one out of there. There we go. And uh, just slide your, your pads in. And uh, obviously, <laughs> They go with the curve of the wheel. Um, actually, I like to do the inside one first. It doesn't really matter. And put them in. You got to go evenly. As you saw when I was taking that other one out, it'll bind up if you don't kind of go both sides, both ends at the same time. Uh, this is going to be a little snug because everything is brand new. Try not to pry on the pad itself. Obviously, you don't want to damage your brand new braking surface, uh, surface, right? But you can pry on these outer tabs and stuff if needed. But again, just try not to bend anything. It'll slide in there. It just takes a little finagling. Finagle, finagle, finagle. I have to go get a smaller screwdriver here. This one's kind of a beast. I see exactly where it needs to go, but it's not wanting to start. Bottom one went in just fine, but I think I might have went a little too far in the bottom one. So let's try starting the top one. top one in now. Now let's see if we can get the bottom one in. Again, I went a little too far on that. Don't 
want that in too far or you'll cause problems on the other side. I'm going to get another smaller screwdriver and then I'll have this, no problem. I thought I had two of them out here. Oh yeah, here it is. Close. Oh yeah, we got her. Uh, no. Yep, 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 yep. There we go. Again, just take your time. You'll get it. And then it should push all the way back up against the, um, the piston back here, okay? All right, not sure what happened there. I don't know if I was recording or what, but the camera shut off. So anyway, get those pieces lined up, push it back against the piston, and don't push back so far that it falls out the back side. I'm almost to that point again right here. Almost fell out the back side, so don't do that. So anyhow, okay, so now I can get the second pad in there now, along with the second. Okay, so this is the part where you want to be careful not to pry on the pad. It gets kind of tempting to do that when you're in here. Do not pry on the on your braking surface. Plenty of other places to pry. Take your time and you can get it without pressing on the actual brake pads. It's tempting, boys and girls, because I've done it not necessary and don't use a hammer or nothing it's not necessary you can get it with just hand force and like in this case I mentioned before don't go too far on one or you'll make the other one difficult that just happened here all right so now I'm getting hung up up here I must be hung up on the back side of this clip yeah, I can see it from here. There we go. I'm holding the pad from the back on the bottom from the back side with my finger. There we go. And it's in there. Again, do not put your ply your screwdriver in here. You'll you'll mess up your your surface. Uh, be careful as long as you don't get a bunch of grease on this. Um, you're good to go right back on the rotor. I mean, if you had new rotors, then you want to clean them up because they'll come with a coating on them. Um, but otherwise, uh, you're good to go. I just put this bolt back in here now. Down on the bottom that I didn't show you. goes right into the rotor so does this one goes right into the rotor on the top and that is all there is to it now you got to tighten it up that obviously has been the hard part today it's getting these bolts loosened and tightened but basically brake jobs done put the wheels back on retorque your lug nuts after 50 to 100 miles and you're good to go. Your brakes will automatically adjust themselves. Make sure your reservoir is full. So since I had the cap off of there, um, now's a good time to check that reservoir level. Make sure she's full. Because if it's not full right now, well, after you do both sides, take that back, do both sides, if it's not full then, you're going to definitely want to fill it up because um, you're pretty much at max level. The piston's going to push out a little bit, but that's not much. And I'm going to go look up the torque level on these real quick. And then I'll get them torqued, and then I'll do the other side. I don't think I'm going to bring you along for that. Um, but that's uh, pretty straightforward. This is a 2014 Buick Enclave. Uh, it really is that easy to replace your brake pads on the rear. 
it's not a big deal at all. Um, if you're not comfortable doing it, take it into somebody. That's fine. But if you'd rather save the money, it cost me fifty-nine dollars for these uh, for these uh, you know mid-range br uh, brake pads for both sides. And uh, yeah, you're you're ready to go. You don't need to bring it in if if you're comfortable doing this stuff and and you and you take care and do it right. Um, I've never had a problem changing brake pads myself. So thanks for following along. Like, subscribe. If you have any questions, uh, feel free to put it down in the comments. Have a great day, and we'll see you in the next video. Hopefully this was helpful.